Hello and welcome back to my channel. I'm Joe Smoking Joe's Pit Barbecue. On today's video, I'm smoking up some Wagyu beef short ribs on my Yoder flat top charcoal grill. So stay tuned. All right, welcome back. So what I've got here is I've got a rack of short ribs that I've already trimmed up. And look at the marbling on these Wagyu beef ribs. These are from Midland Meat Company. Um, and my friends at Proud Souls Barbecue uh, supplied the meat for this cook. So thank you. Uh, Team Proud Souls Barbecue up in Denver, Colorado. Beautiful looking rack of ribs. I'm going to show you how I got to this point here. So they obviously come nice, pack, nice and packaged as you see here. Got my knife. Extremely sharp. And again, I'm using just a real simple knife sharpener from the company called Cut. K-U-T-T. -T. This little sharpener uh, is amazing. Um, and you'll see what I'm talking about here. You see what it did to that plastic. So, I'm going to take the ribs out of the packaging. And this is what we look like here. Let me move these aside. Now, look at this marbling, guys. This is amazing. Okay. Now, you could leave some of the fat on there because it will render this fat is unlike any other fat that you guys have probably trimmed off of a brisket or anything like that. It's extremely soft. I mean, it's almost like butter. I guarantee if, if I were to lay my hand here uh, on top of the fat that it'll start to melt away. It's that soft. It's extremely fine. And you'll see what I'm talking about here. So I have a sharp knife here. And I just like to look at the edges here and see how much fat I've got. And just start trimming away at this. Okay, I am wearing a cut glove, again from the same company, KUTT. I'm not sponsored by them or anything, I just like their products. So just start taking some of this fat off, and you see how nice and easy that comes off. Look at that. Okay, so I can kind of tell where my where my meat starts. Don't be afraid to take off a little bit, it's okay. And then just try to stay on top of that meat and trim your rib. You do have a little bit of silver skin above the meat that I'm also going to take off. Now you will have a section of the ribs that has a little bit more fat. Don't take a whole lot of that fat off because it will render. Again, this fat is pretty soft, guys. But stay right on top of that, right under that, uh, or right above the meat, if you will, as you can see here. You can see some of the silver skin and some of the fat. Again, just lay your knife nice and flat and start taking off some of that silver skin and some of that fat. Okay, pretty simple here. And this is a very delicate uh, piece of meat. But in talking to my buddy Chris at Proud Souls Barbecue, these guys can take on the heat, okay? So I've, I've never cooked some Wagyu beef ribs before. I've cooked beef ribs before. In fact, I did them on my Yoder Hawaii 640 pellet grill. I'll leave a link up top so you guys can see that video when you're done with this one. But those ribs were the absolute best ever. They tasted amazing, good smoky flavor. Again, if you don't want to watch this, this trimming portion of it, you can fast forward it. But I like to teach people how to trim, so there's a lot of people that might not know how to trim some beef ribs. And this is for you, stick around, you can see it. There you go, so now I've exposed the silver skin here. Take the top layer and you can see the silver skin here. Again, just, it helps to start with a nice sharp knife, okay? Just like that. A little bit more silver skin here. Now the knife that I'm using is a hammer stall knife that I purchased a while back. My brisket slicing or my uh, slicing knife is also from Hammer Stall. Okay, and they are really sharp. Again, I'm not sponsored by those companies. I wish I was. This is a really good company. They make a really nice product, German steel uh, knives. Okay, so I already exposed half of this rib. 
And I'm going to start on this side of it here. You can lay your knife nice and flat. Okay, then you can kind of see where you need to go. Okay, now the reason I picked up the uh, the ribs was to take a look at it because your beef ribs will always have a layer of fat that's pretty thick, just like this one here. So I don't need to take that off. I just need to trim it up a little bit or keep it level. A lot of this will render off because this fat is super soft. I mean, you can see it's like carving butter almost. All right, a little bit more here. So we got a little bit more fat on this side. I'm not going to dig into it too much, okay? Because I want my I want my um, ribs to cook evenly. I don't want them all dis uh, disproportioned, if you will. Okay, so that's about it. Now I did notice that on this rack, the membrane was already removed off the back. And I'm okay with that because I was going to remove them anyway. And see, this one has the membrane removed as well. And any time that, that I cook ribs, whether it's beef ribs or pork ribs, I like to take the membrane off because if I can introduce more rub or more flavor to the ribs themselves, I'll do that. Let me make sure that this... Hang on. Now this has a little bit of the membrane still on it, so not a whole lot of it though, just a couple of little pieces of it. And you can see here. Looks like they left a little bit on it. I'll try to take most of this off here. of the membrane has been removed I just noticed a little piece here so I went ahead and took that off as well so at this point the only thing left to do is to go ahead and season the ribs and I am using Victory Lane barbecue rubs starting with my garlic jalapeno seasonal look at that look at how beautiful these are so putting enough of this you can hold it about 8 to 10 inches away from the, the meat itself. Pat it down. Get the sides. And get the bottom as well. No binders. Okay. The second layer. Um, this is a beef rub that, um, <clears throat> excuse me. Is not available to the market yet, but it's really good flavor. I actually used this on some burgers that I cooked the other day. It came out amazing. Okay, just like that. Then I got a surprise rub that I'm going to use. At the bottom side. All right. My surprise rub is this rub from Proud Souls Barbecue. Okay. They're in Denver, Colorado. Check them out. This is called Black Magic. Now, this has activated charcoal. It's not the type of charcoal that you cook with. Okay. People freak out about that. It's not that type of charcoal. It's usually made out of like um, coconut husk. I don't know what this one is made out of, but it's got a really good smoky flavor to it. A little bit of saltiness in there, just an overall good flavor. Just gonna sprinkle some of this on the top like this. Now, a lot of people use this to get some nice color on their meat. I know that I'm gonna get, get a nice bark on these ribs on my Yoda flat top. So I'm not worried about that. I, I just like the flavor. It's got a little bit of smoky flavor. 
to it. So I'm just going to apply some like this on the top. Just like that. Got to get the sides. Just a little bit. Nice and dark. Uh, for sure, but man, the flavor on this is amazing. I was just trying it out of the package or out of the bottle, if you will. It's got some amazing flavor. So just a little bit, just enough to coat the the ribs. So I'm gonna fire up my Yoder flat top, and I will see you guys outside. So stay tuned. All right, welcome back. So we are outside at my Yoder flat top, and I started with a basket of Kingsford charcoal, and I also dropped two splits of mesquite wood. Um, so you guys know that I usually use uh, post oak wood, but for these beef ribs, I'm going to keep it Texas and go with a more traditional mesquite style barbecue. So I'm going to shut the lid down and try to monitor or maintain the temperature right at 275 and 300. And I will have to control that obviously with my intake on the lower right hand side and the exhaust cap. So I'm not going to open these up for probably two, maybe three hours. Then I'll come back and spritz it with apple cider vinegar and water mixed at 50%. So stay tuned, guys. All right, welcome back. So we are at the two-hour mark, and I just wanted to show you guys, before I open the lid, I have not opened this whatsoever. I've got very little smoke coming out of that stack, as you can see there. Now, again, this is a grill, as I've, as I've mentioned before. It's not a smoker, but it does a heck of a job as a smoker. So you do have the seam where the lid separates right there so you'll get a little bit of smoke coming out of there I'm okay with that again I've got my intake <clears throat> excuse me uh, my intake is open about half an inch and so is my exhaust as you can see there and the temperature you know some of you guys have been asking me can you maintain temperatures on the smoker I don't know if you guys can make that out but I'm at 298 degrees and it's been there for the last two hours it has not moved one bit um, it goes up to 300 then comes down to around 298 and quickly jumps back up so um, you know those of you guys that are asking if you can maintain temperature on this pit uh, absolutely you can so let's take a look look at that so I've got some nice pullback on both racks the surface I don't think it's quite ready to spritz yet um, it's almost there it's still a little moist on the surface so I'm not going to spritz yet I'm really liking the color of these um, probably in fact I still have enough charcoal uh, probably another hour and a half I'll come check them and at that point if they're ready to spritz I will go ahead and spritz let me show you guys the the wood and the charcoal if you guys can see that down there um, it's still going strong so that's why my temperatures are have been maintaining right at 300 degrees or so so we'll be back uh, about an hour and a half and at that point if the, my bark is, is set I will go ahead and spritz so stay tuned all right welcome back so we are back outside and let me show you this again my temperature is still running at 298 pretty crazy right talk about dialing this thing in now I did drop one more split of mesquite wood at the three and a half hour mark so an hour and a half after the last video clip so at this point I still haven't spritzed let's take a look at this I haven't opened this for an hour and a half let's see what we look like here oh yeah see and I still I mean I can spritz now uh, my bark is set actually let me move you guys in closer here there you go. So as you can see, the bark is definitely set. Got some really nice pullback on these ribs. Look at that. And, I, and again, I'm spritzing with apple cider vinegar and water. Mixed at 50%. And I got a really nice dark color. I think that Black Magic from Proud Souls Barbecue uh, is helping me get that dark color as well. But these things are really, really nice. And that pullback is crazy. So I think I've got enough, um, I'm not even going to measure the internal temperature, but I think i got enough color on these things where I can wrap them. Um, in fact, let me go get my thermopin. We're going to check the internal temperature, 
if I'm at least 165, 170, I'm going to go ahead and wrap. So stay tuned. All right, we're back. So I got my thermopin here, and I'm at 177, which I'm okay with. Look at the juice where I probe this thing. Whew, man, these things are juicy. So I'm going to go ahead and wrap these. Again, I got the color that I want. I'm going to go ahead and wrap them. I'm not going to put any any sauce or anything, any juice or anything inside the, uh, the wrap. I am using butcher paper. In fact, let me back the camera up, and I'm going to show you guys how I'm going to wrap this, so stay tuned. All right, welcome back. So I've got my ribs here. I'm going to go ahead and spritz before I wrap them. And the pullback on these ribs is amazing. Again, I'm already at 177 degrees. I'm going to push them a little bit to probably 205, maybe even 210, or until uh, the ribs are nice and tender. So a real simple process here on the wrapping, guys. Just go ahead and fold it over. Um, roll it in. Fold the edges of the paper in. Just like so. like that real simple wrap so these are gonna go back in the smoker and my fire actually let me show you the my fire is still going pretty pretty good as you can see there so I'm not gonna need, uh, need to add any wood yet gonna monitor the temperatures I think I'm gonna be fine at 299 or so and the next time I see you guys will be inside the internal temperature that I'm looking for again is gonna be in around 205 even higher if if, uh, if it's not tender so uh, give it another two hours. We'll come back and check the temperature. So, all right, welcome back. So the ribs are ready, and the total cook time was right at eight hours, and the pit temperature uh, stayed in the 290 to 300 mark, and I was okay with that. Again, I wanted to push these a little bit and uh, help render that fat a little bit, if you will. So I'm gonna go ahead and open these up. I haven't even opened these ribs. So you guys get to see it with me. See what we got here. Man, these things are tender, guys. The internal temperature, just in case you're wondering, I took them to 205 and then let them rest for an hour. Um, and now you're seeing it first here. Now one thing that I do notice is that the, the um, butcher paper, and as you can see all this uh, oil here it rendered really nice and this is a bigger rack here oh man these things feel super super tender So right out of the gate, <clears throat> the first thing I see, and I've cooked prime ribs before, the pullback on these bones is crazy. Um, the rib looks like it did shrink down, but it climbed up, almost rose like a, like a cake, if you will. So it, they're a lot taller than, than from what they started, and the smell in here is amazing. Again, I use the Victory Lane garlic jalapeno season all some beef rub that we're working on and then the black magic from proud souls barbecue so check them out if you want to order some of that so let's slice into these i'm super excited to see what these look like on the inside oh man really tender if i can break through this bark here Really, really tender, guys. Oh, man. It wants to slide off the bone. Look at this. This is insane. Look at the juices coming out of that. Man, look at this. <laughs> oh my alright guys I'm going to back the camera up and I'm going to give this a taste stay tuned 
All right, guys, as you can see, these ribs look amazing. You know, I tasted a little piece of the shred that came off when I was slicing it, and that's got a lot of taste, but I can't wait to dig into these. These ribs, they look amazing, guys. That's the first thing I can tell you. The, uh, the fat rendered nicely. I mean, these are monster, monster ribs. Again, these are from Midland uh, Meat Company. And before I, before I uh, give these a taste, I do want to tell you about a uh, channel, uh, Chef Saito. I'm going to leave a link up here to his channel. This is a chef that cooks a lot with Wagyu. Been watching his channel, and he's an amazing chef, guys. Check him out if you would, please support his channel. But, uh, guys, let's dig into this. I can't wait. So, I don't know which one to grab. I mean, they all look really, really good. I'm going to grab this one right here, actually. This one up front. As you can see, look at this bark. It's crazy. Okay? And I see a lot of people pick at it. I'm just going to take a bite. Cheers. Right here. Oh. oh man. Give me a minute. First of all, <clears throat> that is the absolute best thing that I've ever tasted. The rub with these three bad boys right here from Victory Lane, from Proud Souls Barbecue, that Black Magic, man, got some good salt out of it. The beefy flavor that's coming out of these ribs is amazing, unlike anything I've ever had before. Uh, this is ridiculous. Um, let, me, let me give my daughter a taste. She's, she's running my camera. You wanna come out on camera, baby? So you can, yeah? <laughs> Tell me what you think of this, baby. And be honest, if you don't like it, just say you don't like it. It's really good. Yeah? Better than the uh, brisket, huh? The, I mean, mm -hmm. this is the absolute best thing ever, guys. I mean, I've, I've cooked a lot of briskets, cooked a lot of different types of foods, but this is insane, right, baby? Guys, this is this is madness. And look at look at how easy this rib just falls apart. So I'm not gonna bite into this because we're gonna have some dinner right now. My wife made some delicious sites to go with these beef uh, beef ribs. But get yourself some of these ribs. If you live in Denver, you're lucky. Because if I lived in Denver, I'd never leave Proud Souls Barbecue because they carry these in stock. Get you some of this Black Magic as well. So. Thanks for watching. Amazing ribs. If you want some, order them from Midland Meat. If you live in the Denver area, go see my, my friends at Proud Souls Barbecue. Thanks for watching. Give me a thumbs up. Till next time, Joe Smoking Joe's Play Barbecue. See you guys.